there has always been okay, this question that comes up and even today it came up, oh, so your parents are doctors and why didn't you get into medical? And uh, you know, so uh, this question I've been answering for many years, but I think uh, what has carried forward is their ability to be able to uh, understand people and uh, also to be able to empathize. I've seen my mom waking up, uh, she's a gynecologist, waking up at 2 a.m. Sometimes there's a delivery that's happening, so you know, all those things have somehow, um, you know, been a part of my growing up years, and that has helped me uh, become a more sensitive person. So much sensitive that, you know, sometimes my parents would be like, oh, but you know, you, if you see blood, you have to be strong because, you know, you can't be like, oh, you know, uh, that person is crying because, you know, you have to be stronger to see their pain also. But I think uh, that sensitivity has helped me become who I am today and also helped me become a designer. And uh, of course, uh, you know, seeing my parents, I was also keen on to pursuing medical, but I'm glad to say that I'm in the design profession, which requires you to be more sensitive, more empathetic, and also more understanding towards others' needs. So uh, here I am today uh, presenting to you some of my experiences and although these experiences are related to the work that I'm doing at SAP, but uh, I think all of us could relate to it because we are in product teams, we are in big IT companies, some of us also have our own startups and some of you are entrepreneurs. So I think we also face similar challenges and uh, I hope that you know my talk helps you uh, connect with it and also helps you understand how we could kind of deal with those challenges. So, uh, I just, uh, how many of you, I'm just deviating a little bit from the topic, but how many of you have uh, followed the Olympics for 2016? <coughs> Can you please raise your hands? Okay, great. So, yes. so this is uh, the excitement that just got over around uh, all the events and what we really saw was uh, a testimony of great effort and passion by Indian sportswomen. And of course, there were a lot of prejudices and uh, a lot of things, but they stood tall against it. And these are some of the images of their grit and glory, I would say. Uh, and uh, of course, this is a great inspiration for women, not only in design, but in all walks of life. So uh, here I am. Uh, just sharing some of these images, but uh, what we take from this is uh, how it got translated into the design journey. So the preparations and hard work that have gone over the years and motivation to break the record was even higher at the Olympics. And uh, of course, uh, what we see here is uh, a lot of uh, effort that had gone into it. But uh, in the, where I work in custom development, uh, it's really tough because it's uh, not like a product scenario where we have uh, huge time uh, cycles and of course there is uh, advantages to that where you know, we have uh, enough time to do user research and all of, follow the exact process. But in custom development, I see it as a marathon. <laughs> Running a marathon is like a 100 meter race and you have to get prepared for it. And all eyes are on that. So what happens really is like it has that enthusiastic start and also a dramatic finish in a very short span of time. So uh, taking this analogy forward uh, at custom development, we learned that in uh, shorter design sprints with the same excitement and rigor, uh, we could open doors to collaborate with customers on further requirements. So what exactly do I mean by the design sprint or you know, within SAP we also call it sprint zero. Uh, so the design sprint is a, is a mini project in itself which uh, delivers tangible results within a short period of time. So what we have is like a, a, you know, the execution plan that has to be quick and collaborative in nature and which helps uh, our customers envision the solution that much before it gets developed and also kind of gives them confidence that their expectations would be met and their vision would be converted into reality. So uh, basically this is where the design uh, sprint kind of fits in 
So we have the UX concept and design, which we call the design sprint, and then we have the following sprints, sprint one, two, three, carried forward. I'm sure most of you who are in the agile mode understand the uh, sprint cycle. And uh, so what really happens is that uh, a small engagement that has encapsulated in such a manner helps uh, build customer trust, also assist customers to take conscious decisions while spending their money and also reduces risks. And what benefits is that you know we have tangible results. Also, we get a better understanding of requirements and build deliverables, which can further be consumed by the following up custom development project. So our focus really is individual interactions, uh, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Uh, a working software or prototype over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over con over uh, contract negotiations, and responding to change over following a plan. So this is the shift uh, that we have made, and uh, of course uh, this is how it typically looks like. But it's uh, generally uh, following the same uh, cycle of design, but. Uh, in a shorter cycle, I would say, where you know we can speed up the innovation, we can issue discovery, interview, and uh, based on in a workshop mode, and also build a quick prototype, which leads to finally a specification and backlog, which gets uh, used up in the sprint, upcoming sprint. So uh, where this actually helps us uh, deliver quick, tangible results in a in a short time, in a close collaboration, and also. It helps us create a joint understanding. And of course, the uh, budget is always an issue, so it's an attractive pricing because we are doing a smaller sprint. And we could use those design sprint deliverables into this upcoming sprints. So this is uh, from the methodology point of view in CD, where we uh, think of the objective and what would be our commitment. And of course, what would be the customer's commitment and the deliverables. So I'll quickly skip through this and uh, walk you through the other uh, focus areas, which is, uh, so what it really helps is that we could actually identify the initial ideas and a rough project size gets discovered. We are in the customer, uh, we get the customer support and readiness early on, which leads to close collaboration during the design sprint. And we also get the required customer resources, which means the user representatives or end users in IT. So how does it work in, in, in the plan? So basically, the business process workshops that we conduct which are generally over a span of three weeks to two months. And uh, these business process workshop workshops lead to product vision. We also uh, convert user research which further leads to understanding the end user requirements. The technical assessment, which leads to architecture understanding, and the mock-up or prototype creation, which leads to a tangible result. And then finally, validation, which leads to customer acceptance. So this uh, design sprint actually helps us build a very good relationship with the customer early on. And we actually try, uh, the customer kind of gets to understand that, you know, this is SAP's way of working and uh, there's a comfort level and the customer opens up to further uh, talks and iterations. As we already saw in the earlier talks, design is an iterative process and until and unless we get our customer support, we will not be able to produce good results. Uh, so what is uh, the design sprint we already talked about and why the design sprint? So SAP, uh, as we some of you would be knowing, is a world leader in enterprise applications. And we are world's third largest independent software manufacturer. But still, we have our challenges. And what are those? Uh, basically, uh, the top use cases are identified in the traditional approach, but they're never budgetized. The value of the app is not tangible before the final design is there. And of course, we have concrete business requirements, yet their unclear effort estimates are not are based out of uncertainty, and their unrealistic customer expectations. Also, the backend integration is one of the main effort drivers, which gets ignored. 
So the typical software development approach, as we all know it, is that as soon as we get the contract uh, that gets signed, we get into the execution phase where we quickly start gathering requirements, documenting specifications, print, scrum planning, resources. That's, that's the traditional approach which most uh, companies follow and uh, of course in shorter timelines. But um, there is a shift uh, with the design sprint is that it acts as a hook to build trust early on. So it helps, uh, basically, the short timeline helps us uh, build a relationship with the customer. Uh, the iterative approach helps us get quick feedback on from the customer and end user. And uh, once again, it's a door opener for bigger deals and projects. And uh, we build our solution, which is focusing on user friendliness. So it, it's the end user that we get directly involved with and stay in focus. The visualization part helps us uh, to deliver reusable mobility components and also reuse the, the design and specification backlog which is created in the design sprint in the following uh, CDP. And also uh, the design to budget. So if the budget is being constrained, uh, basically the customer gets to understand what is the design process and the value of design gets uh, uh, upfront, you know. So basically, the customer support and uh, help in uh, building the requirements phase and the design solution gets evangelized early on. So the customer uh, point from the customer point of view, uh, it's uh, valuable because it increases uh, trust, decreases the entry barrier, and uh, we give tangible results. So it's a wow factor. And of course, we mitigated a lot of risk uh, of taking on a huge piece to be able to do it uh, all in one go. And uh, we established a working model. From a custom development point of view, it's higher win rate and we could support a uh, sales cycle. We have given accurate estimate because we've already worked with the customer once, so we understand what is uh, there. And there is IP protection for the early sprint. Uh, so it doesn't really go to the competitor and uh, there is software and software related uh, there is a lot of revenue generated from this uh, software and software related services so uh, the design sprint thus fits very well from a technology and business value point of view and uh, it is this impact which is created by the design sprint by uh, focusing on smaller milestones, which leads to bigger milestones in future. Uh, so the impact that is made through the design sprint and uh, that gives this end users a glimpse of what could be achieved uh, and uh, in a short span of time. It further helps gain trust and give assurance that SFP has the right skill set and know-how and could be a trusted partner in the journey. To, to gain insights into the requirements and also tie up with them in their vision. So these are some of the deliverables which come out of this, uh, the design sprint, which is a vision and, vision, uh, and scope document, and initial product backlog, as well as a user experience or a prototype, and then a final financial proposal for the next offer. So this is our new approach towards uh, focusing on design and health, building trust, excellence, and success. This is uh, the impact which is getting created is that the low, the low entry barrier, risk mitigation, and tangible results, which we already yeah. talked about. Again, an ex established working model, and you know, so many times I've seen uh, customers, project, pro uh, project managers saying that, what is the value of UX, you know? And of course, I mean, to that I was just saying it's experience by doing. Until now, unless the experience they work with us. Um, just recently, I was on a customer site and my project manager was like, but you're a UX designer, I don't know what will you do. I don't know why am I taking you uh, on the customer site. And by the end of the workshops, by the end of the design sprint, he actually came and thanked me that, you know, thank you. I mean, today I finally realized what a great impact it has made. And it saved us so much cost of you know, building it straight away. So I think uh, it, it is uh, essentially experience by doing, and uh, 
we all have to uh, uh, fight this battle as UX designers and we're continuously striving but it's the same grit and determination that we saw in Olympics that uh, women in design uh, have to also take up. So uh, with that I would like to, since we're running out of time also, I would like to thank you and, um, and for questions. Uh, Questions? Uh, so, are there things that the design sprint cannot solve? Cannot solve. So, uh, see, design sprint is focusing on smaller tasks, so we're not taking the whole chunk altogether. So, yes, it's not solving all the problems in one go. And that's the whole idea that we are not going to solve all the problems in one go. We're just going to give the customer a flavor of what it is to get one problem solved at a time. And once the customer is happy, those deliverables get anyways converted into the project. And uh, we obviously have continuous workshops later on. So, hope that answers. Does the research work is included in this period of we do a full research and then start spring design? So uh, the research phase is included in the design sprint. Uh, there was one slide which I showed. Uh, I'll just go back to it maybe. So that was the how part. Yeah. So we have in the design sprint, we are focusing. Uh, that's a good question because uh, you know we definitely are not covering all the research part in one go. Because as I said, we, we're limited on the time and it's a very short design sprint. So, uh, but yes, it helps in a way because we are focusing on, so we understand and prioritize. So it's called prioritizing backlogs and when we are trying to understand user requirements. So we definitely get an overview and from that we prioritize that in the design sprint we're taking these. And in the upcoming sprints, in the upcoming engagements, we'll be taking on to those. So at least uh, the customer gets to understand the process and the value of it, uh, which is otherwise missing, otherwise everything's taken, you know, you should only take in that much that you can chew. So it's like that. So. But sometimes you have to get, go back and do the, uh, get, uh, if I get a uh, thing further research, I get points where I need to go back and change my design for the older one. So how do we deal with situations? Yeah, so if you have to change, the, see, in any case, you know, you will be, at least for the design sprint, in the workshop mode, it's like a war room situation where you're actually there understanding, creating, and coming back with validated stuff. So it's not that, you know, you close everything there and then. And what comes up is the next new thing. So, okay, sorry, just one, one minute. So, uh, yeah, so basically, you're closing all the things that you promised for that design sprint within those that period of time whether it's three weeks or four months or two months basically it's shorter time duration it's not like a one year or a two year cycle and what comes up next is the next phase of workshops so basically this is like sprint zero you could say it's like preparing for a race you know thank you